we are at Rutherglen Town Hall and we've been recording uh, a lovely programme of arias and duets from, uh, from various operas. It's, it's fantastic that uh, Scottish Opera have joined us this week. Uh, it's the first uh, project of this nature we've had since we went into lockdown a year ago. Ironically, uh, last year, 14th of March 2020, the last performance we had at the Town Hall prior to, to lockdown was in fact Scottish Opera with their Opera Highlight Show. Uh, and as was the case previously when Scottish Opera visited a fantastically successful night, sold out, thoroughly enjoyable. Little did we know what was round the corner. Uh, and as I say, the, not long after that, doors were closed. They've been closed ever since. Fortunately now, we're able to, uh, thanks to funding in this instance from Creative Scotland, uh, we're able to put on projects such as this and welcome Scottish Opera back in a year later uh, to what will no doubt be a, a fantastic, fantastic film. I heard opera pretty late, actually, but I started singing not because I wanted to sing opera. I, I was in a band, <laughs> so cool. And I started taking lessons and my teacher kind of led me to consider training my voice classically. Um, and only then did I have the curiosity <laughs> to go listen to opera. Uh, and I just immediately fell in love with it. I had heard some Gilbert and Sullivan, and my parents took me to uh, Dolly Cart performances, but the first sort of grand opera that I heard, I remember very distinctly, I was 12, um, and it was Madame Butterfly in the King's Theatre. Um, and it was just amazing, I thought, um, because I didn't expect any of it to be like that. It was Madame Butterfly, it was in the King's Theatre in Edinburgh, it was Scottish Opera. I was in the very front row and I stayed awake all the way to the end until she died, spoiler alert, and uh, then fell asleep. So I, met, I saw all of the nice stuff and then missed the sad bit, which is probably good for a three-year-old. What does it take to be an opera singer? <laughs> it takes a lot of patience. A lot of dedication. I think it takes a lot of perseverance. It does take a while to, to, to train a voice. The vocal cords are two tiny muscles and, and singing actually requires the whole body and training that, making sure that all the muscles work well together and projection is good and resonance is good. There's no tension, that takes years. You hear these voices that are unmiked. There's no amplification other than the acoustics that they're in, other than you know, their body making this incredible sound and I think that you can get some really like spine tingling moments. It's theatre, it's music, you get to work with so many different people. Obviously there's also the whole technical side of it that the audience doesn't see and isn't supposed to see because it makes it magical. It's the combination of everything, the drama and the costumes and the, the whole sort of atmosphere that it creates, the, the storytelling where everything sort of combines to give the audience an experience that is unlike anything else. So the first piece that we're going to do is the Barcarolle from Offenbach's opera Tales of Hoffmann. This is at the beginning of the last act and it's set in Venice and the two characters are drifting down the Grand Canal on a gondola singing as they do so, so you can sort of hear the lapping of the, the water uh, in the music. And it's a, a, a tune that hopefully you'll recognise.
This piece is from The Marriage of Figaro by Mozart, De Vieni Non Tardar. Susanna is pretending to seduce the Count. She knows that her new husband is watching and by the end of it, she actually is seducing Figaro in her mind and it's, it becomes a love song to him. The next piece is 
also from The Marriage of Figaro, but it's a different character singing. The character that I get to sing is called Cherubino. He's a teenager, and in this particular aria, he goes on and on and on about the effect that women have on him. I think he's just discovering hormones. <laughs> The next piece is O Mio Babbino Caro from Gianni Schicchi by Puccini. It's a really heartfelt song from a daughter to a father. She's worried that he is going to tell her that she can't marry the, the man that she loves. She is trying every way that she could possibly get him to be on side with her. So there's a little bit of manipulation in there and she knows what she's doing to get him on side.
The next piece is from an opera called Carmen, um, composed by Georges Bizet. The music is gorgeous, first of all, and I think it's also, it's also the, the, the strong female character. She really does what she wants, and she has many flaws, but she's free. And I think that's one thing that's really appealing. The next item is the flower duet from Delibes' opera Lacme. Um, and though you might not recognise the title, I'm sure you recognise this as the music for the BA advert. It doesn't actually have a great deal to do with the plot of the opera because most of the things that happen, happen after this duet has taken place. The only suspicion that all is not well is in the middle section where Lacme says that um, she feels some sort of premonition of something that's going to happen to her father, the Brahmin priest. Um, and she's not wrong, um, but that's after we've heard this duet. Oh, <laughs> 
the next piece is from Romeo et Juliette, an opera composed by French composer Charles Gounod. And in this particular part of the, the piece, Stefano, who is um, on the Montague's side, so Romeo's side, uh, goes to the Capulet's house to sing them a very provoking and mocking song about a bird who's about to fly away from the nest. Obviously, he's referring to Juliet. piece is Moi je m'appelle Cibolette from Cibolette by Renaldo Han. It's 
poking fun at different women and saying, oh, prudes are called Gertrude, people called Adele are all um, faithful, um, but I'm Ciboulette and all the boys love me. So this next one is our final piece and it's a duet from the first act of Hansel and Gretel, the opera by Humperdinck which is based on the famous Grimm fairy tale. If you enjoy this, here's a plug, you can go to our website and see the whole thing um, which we recorded just before Christmas. But at this point in the opera, Hansel and Gretel have been left alone in their parents' house. They should be making brooms um, but they decide that they would much rather play and dance.
Oh, my God. 